Facebook Live. I'll just wait a few moments and let a few people join us. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Zoe Clark. I'm an osteopath and I also have AS and I've joined NAS to help on the helpline and with these Facebook Lives to help everyone self-manage their AS as well as we can during the COVID-19 outbreak. So thanks for joining today. Please feel free to say hi in the comments. As always, please do ask questions um, and give suggestions as well on what's worked for you and what you find difficult. I'll be going through the questions as we go. I'll pause about halfway through and then again at the end of the video. So I'll be able to answer anything there. As always, the video will remain on the page afterwards. So um, do no, don't worry if you can't watch the whole video, you'll be able to catch up later. Hi Julie, thank you for joining. So um, we'll also be posting the video on our website afterwards and with a blog post and a write-up of a lot of the exercises I'll be going through. So if you don't want to try the exercises live, that's absolutely fine. You can pop back later, look at the write-up and try them in your own time. There's no pressure whatsoever. So today I'm going to be talking all about exercising at home. I think this should be particularly helpful for those of us self-isolating and shielding. Um, and hopefully it will give you a few ideas on ways you can work exercise into your day without it having too much of an effect on your fatigue levels or your pain. Hi Janet and Debbie, thank you for joining. I'll keep an eye on the comments as we go. So please do ask your questions. If you'd like any more personalised advice um, or any questions you don't want to post publicly, please do email me um, zoe at nas.co.uk. I've popped the email address in the video description. And I've also put the helpline number in there as well because we're available Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. to answer your questions and to support you as well. So I think we've got a few people watching. Great. Hi, Joanna and James and Jeanne. Brilliant. So we'll get started then. Um, I will be going through a few gentle exercises today. So as I said, if you don't want to take part live, that's absolutely fine. But if you would like to take part, I'd recommend wearing some loose, comfortable clothing try and have a space around you where you've got a little bit of room to work with. If you want to do any of the lying down exercises, I've got an exercise mat, but you can do them in bed if that's more comfortable and if it's easier to get into bed rather than down onto the floor. Um, and I'll also be going through a couple of exercises where you can use a light weight. When you first do these exercises, you may want to do it without any weight at all. And then you can always use like a light dumbbell or a tin of beans or something like that if you want to add a little bit of weight in your own time. So we'll get started. Firstly, um, I think it's really important to go through why exercise is really important with AS. So exercise really is one of the main ways that you can manage your AS long term. Getting the movement and getting the flexibility going is really, really important. It's not enough to just, just to rely on the medications. So it's something I'm, I'm really passionate about teaching people how you can fit the right exercises for you in throughout, throughout your day and do it in a really achievable, manageable way as well. There are lots of different types of exercise as well, so I'll be going through each one and looking at the benefits of each one and giving you an idea of how you can incorporate those exercises in different ways. So the other main thing about exercise is that it needs to be regular and it needs to be sustained over a long period of time to get the benefit as well. And it is natural that your symptoms will fluctuate over time, so the types of exercise you do and the amounts will change day to day. And that is absolutely fine. The idea of this video is to give you a lot of different ideas. So if you're on a really high pain and fatigue day, you still know some exercises that you can do to get the benefit and to get um, them easing your symptoms. And then on days when you're feeling better, you can then do the more advanced exercises. So it really will change day to day. So the first type of exercise I'll go through is aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise is any exercise that gets your heart rate up and gets your circulation going. This is really good both for, for AS, but also for your general health, your stamina and your fitness. This is probably going to be one of the exercises that I think people who are at home more either self-isolating or shielding completely is probably the hardest one to incorporate naturally. And it's also going to be the one that you probably notice most when you do get out of the house more and you're out walking. You'll notice that when you are walking, you'll probably get a little bit out of breath. So hopefully incorporating a few easy aerobic exercises at home over the next few weeks, it will then prepare you for when you are going out and about more, hopefully hopefully in the near future. So a little bit on safety as well, so I don't just jump ahead of myself. Um, with all new exercises, do take it nice and easy and start gradually and gently build up over time. If you want any more personalised exercises, 
as I said at the beginning, you can either get in contact with myself, I can put together some free exercise plans, or you can speak to your physiotherapist, especially if your rheumatologist can refer to a rheumatology physiotherapist. They'll be able to give you a lot more specialised advice that's personal to you. This is probably most appropriate if you're relatively newly diagnosed because they'll be able to work with you in the most appropriate exercises to start with but also if you've had any previous surgery and if you've got any fusions it's really important that you take it very carefully with any new exercise. Um, so the in terms of aerobic exercises some of the easiest ones you can do around the house are brisk walking to get your heart rate up. If you've got space in the house, like in a long corridor or in a large room where you can walk in circles, or if you've got a garden where you can walk around in there, that can be really helpful to get your heart rate up. If you don't have space, then marching on the spot can do exactly the same thing. Um, so I'd recommend just standing somewhere where you've got plenty of room around you, and then marching on the spot, but really bringing your arms up high and bringing your knees up high as you do it as well. So it's going to be working on the flexibility through your shoulders, through your back, through your hips, knees and ankles, and it's going to get your heart rate up and help with that cardiovascular exercise too. And then other examples are using the stairs. So if you've got stairs in your house, you can either use the whole flight of stairs if, you've, if you're comfortable with that. And particularly for that, I'd recommend only doing it if you've got good balance. But you can just walk or jog up and down stairs repeatedly until you're out of breath and do that for around 60 seconds at a time and then take a breather and then do it again. So you're getting and stage where you've got your heart rates going up, then you've got the recovery and you can repeat that a couple of times if you need to. If you don't have stairs um, or if your balance isn't great, then you can always use just the bottom step of stairs um, and just doing the same thing. So doing step ups and step down with that until you can feel your heart rate going up and you're getting a little bit out of breath, maybe sweating a little bit, and then you can take a rest period after that to recover. And then star jumps can be really helpful as well if you're okay with kind of impact type exercises and as long as you've got plenty of room around you as well star jumps can be great because it, again it's going to get the flexibility through your shoulders your hips and your legs um, and it's also going to get your heart rate up as well and it can get the endorphins going and be quite fun too um, and then lots of different online classes are helpful things like aerobics and zumba and sometimes in a group setting, it can be a bit more enjoyable and a bit easier to do as well. So do look at any local groups to you who are now offering online classes. As with any class, I'd recommend speaking to the instructor first and making sure they've got a good knowledge of AS so that they know how they need to modify exercises for you and make sure it's safe. Again, that's particularly important if you've got any fusions in your back or if you've had any previous surgery like hip replacements definitely speak to the instructor and make sure they really understand your condition first. So the next section of exercises that I think is particularly relevant for AS is to work on your flexibility and your mobility. So these are any exercises that are going to be stretching your muscles or getting your joints moving and working on the flexibility and movement there. For AS in particular, obviously we want our spine to stay really flexible, so that's very important, but also our shoulders and our hips are very important because if you do get any stiffness in your back or if you get any fusions in your back, the more mobility you have in your shoulders and in your hips, the better because that's going to help you then adapt your movements and help take any strain off your spine as well. So I've gone through a few different flexibility exercises for the back, hips and shoulders in previous videos. So do pop back either to the videos um, section on Facebook or you can pop over to the My AS My Life page on our website. And I've got all the videos there along with blog posts and write-ups of exercises as well. So if you want some really detailed exercises, do head on over there and give those a go. Today I will go through some of the seated spinal exercises that we um, that we've gone through before because I think these are particularly helpful and also they really are suitable for anyone depend you know no matter whether you have a more advanced condition where you've got fusions or whether you've got a little bit of stiffness it can be adapted for everyone. Uh, I'll also go through the cat stretch which can be really helpful which is nice and gentle I'll do that both on the floor but then also against a wall and then we'll go through a few shoulder exercises and hip exercises and some rib movements as well. Also for flexibility, again, lots of classes are available. So particularly things like yoga and Pilates, Tai Chi and Qigong can be really helpful. But again, thinking of speaking to the instructor beforehand to make sure it's suitable for you and just really making sure that you start nice and gently in a beginner's class and then build up over time as things improve. 
and I will, will reiterate as well that you're, as because your symptoms fluctuate over time, the amount of exercise you want to do each day will vary. So just be comfortable with that and, and really listen to your body so that you're not feeling like just because you managed to do one class you know, the week before, you should be able to do it every week. It's natural that sometimes you'll have to adapt things depending on how you're feeling on the day. So I'll go through a few of the exercises now. So feel free to join in um, if you'd like to. But as I said at the beginning, if you want to just wait and watch the video back so you can do them in your own time, that you're more than welcome to as well. So firstly, the seated spinal exercises. So this I showed in the work from home video in the past and also in the, um, in the rib video too. So with these exercises, it's really helpful if you do it with your breathing. So I'll show you the movement and I'll show you how we'd use our breathing with that movement. And then I'll do it a couple of times over where you can join in. So firstly, we'd be working on the rotation in our back. So we're gonna work right from the neck all the way through the mid back and down to the lower back. You can do this seated or standing, but sitting is probably easiest. So what you want to do is breathe in to prepare. And then as you breathe out, you'll look to your right and you'll twist your body around to follow that movement. And then you can breathe in while you're there and then breathe out and come back to the center. And then we do it the same to the other side. So breathing in to prepare, then you breathe out as you look over and then follow around with your body. Breathe in as you hold it there and breathe out as you bring it around again. So with this, only go as far as is comfortable. Don't feel like you have to force the movement, you know, even further or, and especially if it's painful as well, don't push through that. So if you'd like to join in now, we'll go through that. So you can breathe in to repair. As you breathe out, look to the right and twist your body around to follow the movement. And then breathing in here and breathe out to come back to the center. And then we'll breathe in again and breathe out to look to the left and rotate round. Try and keep sitting upright and breathe in and breathe out and return back to the center. So as you're doing that, it's really helpful to imagine you've got a string on the top of your head that's pulling up. So you're keeping nice and upright. It's easy when easier when you're trying to get further to kind of slump a little bit, but actually we want to create a nice stretch through the spine as we do that. So we'll do it once more each side and then we'll move on to the next one. So again, take a deep breath in and then breathe out, look to the right and twist your body around as far as comfortable. Breathing in again, keeping nice and tall and breathe out back to the center. And again, deep breath in, breathing out, look to the left and twist around to the left. Breathing in and breathing out and bring it back to the center. So if you stay nice and relaxed for a second and just see how that's feeling, hopefully that's feeling a little bit easier. I have got a write up of these exercises that we'll post on the website later on. So um, it's got all the different timings and how many repetitions I recommend on there. But really, as I said, it's better just to start nice and gently and build them up over time. So the next movement, we're gonna be tilting over to the side. So again, we'll take a deep breath in to prepare. And then as we breathe out, we'll tilt the head over and then bend the spine to follow. Again, you can do the sitting or standing, whichever is most comfortable for you. So we can try that together. So you take a deep breath in and breathe out and tilt your head over and then bend with the spine to follow. And then breathe up, breathe in as you come back up. And you can breathe out and tilt over to the other side. Breathing in as you come up. Once more on the other side, breathe out and tilt over and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in again and come back to resting. So let me know in the comment how that feels and if you have any aches or pains, obviously take it nice and gently. The next movement for the seated spinal exercises is going to be looking down to the floor and slumping and then looking up towards the ceiling and arching backwards. So we want to breathe out as we slump down because we're going to be compressing the area of our ribs and our lungs. And then we'll breathe in as we look up because we're opening out our lungs and the front of our chest as well. So we'll breathe in to prepare and then we'll breathe out as we do the first movement down. So if you want to try it with me, we breathe in, then breathe out 
and tuck your chin down to your chest and just gently slump your back down and then breathing in look up towards the ceiling and arch your chest brain towards the ceiling and breathe in and come back to the center if you want to try that a few more times then you can do that with your breathing again i'll talk you through it um, but my ribs are a little bit sore today so I, i'm not going to overdo it myself so you take a deep breath in to repair and then bring your chin towards your chest as you breathe out and just slump your back down and as you breathe back in you're going to look up towards the ceiling and arch so your chest bone comes towards the ceiling and then breathe in as you come back to the center and then breathe out chin down and slump then you can breathe in and bring it all the way up to looking up and bring your chest bone towards the ceiling and breathe out and come back to the center so let me know how that one feels hopefully it gives you a good stretch through your ribs it'll get the spine moving um, and it's moving in all different directions as well you can then make this more advanced by doing a combination of movements but i would recommend giving these a go to begin with and then if you want the more advanced exercises you can always get in touch with me um, and just play around with different movements as well so the next um, stretch is a, a really good rib opener so it's really easy to just think of the spine itself and forget that we've got ribs that are attached to it but the rib cage actually comes around so it joins along to the spine you've got spinal joints where the ribs join there and then it comes around in a cage and then you've got the cartilage which joins onto your chest bone here so you really want to be working not only on your spinal flexibility but on your ribs as well so breathing exercises are really effective because as the lungs expand you then get that expansion of the ribs and you get the ribs moving both at the cartilage at the front of the chest but also on the spinal joints at the back of the, the, the rib cage. So any breathing exercises where you're getting a deep inhalation is really helpful and also this is really something that's really important. Um, you may have had the measurements where they take a measurement of your rib cage um, as you're relaxed and then get you to take a deep breath in and they measure how it expands. If you do have poor expansion then these are the kind of exercises that they'd recommend i have done a video all on um, rib pain and breathing exercises i think it was the first facebook video i did um, so do check back for that one in particular and i've gone through lots of different exercises you can try but one of the easiest ones to follow is the wine glass arms exercise so i'll go through that now and you can join along if you'd like to so with this again you're going to use the breathing because and we're going to really focus on taking as deep a breath as we can as i said i'll take it quite gently if you're having a rib flare at the moment then i recommend not doing this because it might be a little bit strong but you can just do um, abdominal breathing so where you're trying to breathe down into your belly that i've gone through in the previous video with the wine glass arms what we do is we have our hands nice and relaxed and then as we breathe in we bring our arms all the way up to make a wine glass shape and then breathe out and relax them down so it's probably easier either sitting on a chair or standing up and somewhere where you've got plenty of room around you as well you're not going to hit anything so if you want to try with me so again as i said we breathe in and bring the arms up and then we breathe out and relax them down and as you're doing this really focus on getting lots of movement in your ribs here breathe right down into your belly so you're sticking your belly out as much as you can so you take a nice deep breath in and bring your arms up and breathe out and relax down breathe in let's bring your arms up in a wine glass shape and breathe out let's bring your arms down really expanding into the bottom of your lungs breathing in and breathing out just do a couple more breathing in breathing out really push your belly out on that in breath breathing in and breathing out and relax so let me know how that one feels hopefully that has felt nice good stretch all around the bottom of your ribs there and you feel like you've taken some good deep breaths in um, do try and do it nice and slowly and gently and obviously take it easy if you do feel lightheaded or anything and it is natural if you do have fusions in the mid part of your back or your ribs it's natural that you'll feel that tightness at the end of the movement so really don't push it just encourage the movement as much as is comfortable so the next exercise we can do with seated are some good shoulder movements and again i'll recommend using the, your breathing to do this to help with the movement so that we'll do a couple of movements where you take a deep breath in and shrug your shoulders up and then as you breathe out you relax them down 
We're going to do some forward shoulder rolls and some back shoulder rolls. And then I'll go through a stretch for the front of your shoulder that will get down into the arm, into the biceps as well. So first, as you take a deep breath in, I want you to shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Deep breath in. And breathe out and relax them down. Breathing in. And breathe out. And one more breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, and then you can take some nice shoulder rolls forward. So we're trying to do nice, big, circular movements as far as is comfortable. These are particularly good if you're feeling a bit stressed or a bit tight in your shoulders. It helps get the shoulders moving, gets the shoulder blades themselves moving as well, which is really helpful, and gets the muscles stretching too. And we'll do a few backwards, so we're going the opposite direction. And it is natural if you've got a few knots in your shoulder muscles, you'll, you might feel or hear a few clicks and pops. That's absolutely fine. As long as it's not painful, then that's absolutely fine. Just take it nice and gently. Okay, good. And then just relax there for a second. And then the next stretch I'll show you is to stretch the front of the shoulder and into the chest, so into the pectoral muscles. Particularly if you've got stiffness in your ribs and your upper back and you find yourself slumping forward a little bit, it's natural as your shoulders come forward, these muscles will get used to that position and will tighten up a little bit. Over time doing this stretch, you can just gently stretch that out and encourage that. And also for people who are doing a lot of exercises to strengthen your back muscles and your shoulder blades, this is helpful because if you've got that flexibility and the ability to stretch through the front here, it's going to make those strengthening exercises a lot easier and more effective too. So long term, that's going to help with how you're sitting and standing and moving. So to stretch through the front of the shoulder nice and easily, you can just keep your shoulders nice and still where they are and then just take one arm out to the side and just move it behind you. Really make sure that as you bring the arm behind you, you don't then twist your shoulders because you're not going to get any stretch through here. You're just going to be getting your back moving instead. So if you want to try this with me, take one arm out to the side and then just keep your shoulders still as you take your arm behind you and you should feel a stretch through the front of the chest, the pec area there and then down into the top of the arm. And then come back down and bring it in. And you can do the same to the other side, so arm out, and take the shoulder behind you, the arm behind you, keeping shoulders still, and then come back to the centre and relax down. If that felt nice and gentle and you want to make that more advanced, you can then do both arms at the same time. You can also make it more advanced by using a door frame or a corner of a wall. So you can place your arm up like so, so that the wall is against your forearm here. And then again, keeping your shoulder facing forward, you can just step forward so that you get the arm moving back like so. And then you can hold it there to get a stronger stretch there. But to begin with, I definitely recommend doing it without the wall, without the door frame, just so you start nice and gently there. Okay, and then the next exercises are some hip exercises. So I went through these in the hip video and again, we'll post a write up of all the exercises as well. So if you want to just watch these and then follow along, you're more than welcome to. So I'll go through some seated exercises first. So if you're sitting in a chair, you can just gently bring one knee up towards you and just hold with your hand on the knee itself and just hug it in towards you and then relax back down and then do the same on the other side. So you're encouraging that movement. You can also then sit with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor and just gently roll your knees side to side as you're sitting in a chair. Get a nice rotation through there and then you can do these standing as well so i'll just move the laptop with me so you can see me standing so for these um hip exercises i'd recommend having something like a chair um, or a table to hold on to for balance and then if i bring this down a little bit you can then just bring so the equivalent of the bringing the knee up towards you would be swinging the leg and then you can also take it back behind you so you can do this a good five to ten times and then we do the other side and then come back and then you can swing the leg in front of you so you can stand and just go forward and backwards in front of you and then out to the side then if you want to get a stronger stretch for the front of the hip you can do a lunge so you take the back leg behind you so this is my right leg 
and then you keep the right knee nice and straight and the front left knee you want to just bend slightly so that your knee is above your ankle and then you can just gently hold that put your hands on your hips and keep your body nice and upright so you get a nice stretch to the front of the hip here and if you want to repeat that on the other side so you take your left leg back again left knee stays nice and straight your right knee bends slightly so that it's in line with your ankle there and then you hold onto your hips and you just arch gently there and then come back okay so i will just go through some of the questions and comments and just see if there's anything i need to answer so far i've seen sally is kindly popping links in there that's really helpful um so uh, John says, um, I'm missing the gym and I've had AS for years and exercise along with meds have been working well, but this lockdown, my motivation has gone, so I'm struggling. John, that's really common. That's something that a lot of people on the helpline are asking us about. I'd really recommend if you know anybody else with AS or anyone else who wants to be doing exercise regularly, then seeing if you can maybe buddy up with them so you can kind of give each other that encouragement and also that reminder. Obviously, I'd pick someone who... Um, has, likes the kind of similar reminders that you do so if you respond well to someone just giving you you know just a gentle nudge then obviously someone like that um, and maybe not someone who's more naggy um, which might be a little bit counterproductive but it might be helpful just having someone else there who you can um, use for encouragement and also a little reminder to do the exercises um, but also it's, it gives you a chance to chat with someone about different types of exercises you can try out and gives you that motivation and those ideas as well um, Julie, I'd definitely recommend, oh yes, Sally's popped the link for the previous hip video um, and we've got the blog post on my AS My Life as well. Um, yeah, and lots of people are looking, um, are missing swimming, definitely, so Sally points out that um, outdoor swimming is okay if you're not shielding at the moment. And we do have a Facebook Live on the 22nd of June with Emily Clark, a physiotherapist, and she's going to be going through all about motivation and exercise, which I think will be really helpful. Yep, and um, Jane has kindly said, um, just for any members watching, do register for the Members Day, because um, we do have one session on exercise for that. Um, Joanna's asking about um, some discomfort, bringing the chin down, and Janet's saying that um, the exercises are hurting, so both of you I'd recommend not doing the ones which are painful. Do get in contact with me, zoe at nas.co.uk, and I can arrange to give you a call and we can discuss things and put together a free exercise plan that should be suitable without um, causing any pain or discomfort or anything. So I think that'd be best just to, to get in contact with me and we can put something together. Um, and Debbie as well would like some safe exercises for the mid-back. So um, you've had some fractures. So yeah, definitely get in contact with me and we can have a chat about something which would be helpful. I wouldn't re recommend doing these along with me if you've got any fractures, any severe fusions or anything. Um, okay, so that was the aerobic and the stretching exercises, the flexibility exercises. So now we're, we'll go on to a little bit about strengthening exercise. So strengthening exercises are really important to keep the muscles strong. So definitely around the spine with AS, you want to make sure that your spinal muscles are nice and strong and supportive. But similarly to the flexibility, if you can keep the strength in your hips and in, in your shoulders as well, then that can be really helpful then when you are up and about and moving. And if you <clears throat> excuse me if you do have any problems with your back it just helps take the pressure off the area and helps with your general mobility and the activities that you're able to do as well so some really easy ways that you can keep the strength is using um, free weights um, either like dumbbells or you can use tins or bottles of water or something like that just to give you a little bit of resistance obviously when gyms are open gym machines can be really helpful particularly the resistance machines you can also do things like using the floor and the wall to give you that resistance as well. So you can do press-ups against the wall and you can do press-ups obviously against the floor. Um, and then you can also do things like sort of bridging, which I went through in the low back video, and ones where you're kneeling on all fours and lifting up. So you're doing the four point kneeling too. I'll go through a few of those. But also importantly, um, classes such as yoga and Pilates can be really helpful, as well as the more higher intensity um, classes like um, you know, the hip classes and things like that. So um, with all of these, I definitely recommend thinking about 
the level that you're at at the moment and then where you want to be and just looking at ways that you can get there by bringing in just small changes. So in terms of the free weight exercises, some really easy ones you can do for your upper body are just using either light dumbbells or tins of beans um, or bottles, something like that. So you've got a little bit of resistance. And then I'll go through a few of those now. So if you want to join in with a light weight, you're more than welcome to, but I recommend when you're first doing this to do it without any weights, so you can see how it feels for you and just make sure you're not gonna be overdoing it. So with this, I, you can do it seated or standing. Um, and I recommend, um, I'll just bring the camera down a little bit. Okay, so yeah, seated or standing um, and have something in your hands if you want to. So firstly, to work on the front part of the arms, we can do biceps curls, which most people will know about. So you keep your elbows tucked in to your sides and have a gentle bend in your elbow. And you just bring your hand up towards you and then relax it down. Then up towards you and relax it down. And you should feel a slight pull just at the front of the arm where your biceps are, just working there. And then you can either with your arms bent to about 90 degrees if you're sitting or as you're standing, you can have your arms relaxed down. I'm gonna have mine bent slightly. You'd have a slight weight in your hands and then do those shoulder shrugs that we did earlier. But because you've got that slight weight there, you're gonna be working on strengthening the muscles that are attached from the neck into the shoulder and into the upper back as well. And then to work the muscles at the back of the shoulders, you can then do short um, row type exercises. So again, having the elbows tucked into your sides and a slight bend in the elbow and holding a weight, and then just bringing your elbow back behind you. So in a pulling movement, so I'll show you from the side. You'd have the elbows bent, and then you just bring them back like so, and then back to the center. And as you're doing that, really focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together at the back as well. So again, from the front, so you'd have your elbows tucked in and then just bring the arms back. And with all of those, what you can do is as that gets easier to do, you can either increase the number of repetitions that you do in one go, or you can do a small number of repetitions, but frequently throughout the day. And then if you want to make it even more advanced, you can then increase the weight that you're holding as well to make it a stronger exercise. Okay, so the wall press up I've shown before in the um, rib video. So that I'll show you side on. So imagine that I'm against a wall here, so my palms are facing the wall. And what you do is you want to stand facing the wall with your palms resting on the wall. Keep your shoulders nice and down and relaxed. And then again, you're gonna focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together as you do this. So you're gonna gently bend your elbows and squeeze the shoulder blades together so your face comes closer to the wall and then push back out again. And again, squeeze the shoulder blades together as you bend to come closer to the wall and back out again. That's essentially doing a press up, but because you're using the wall there, it's not as much press pressure as if you were using the floor. To make that stronger, you can actually bring your feet slightly further from the wall as you do it, so that then you've got a little bit more of that resistance and pressure there. And then gradually as you get further away, you may find there's a point when you then want to do it on the floor, um, which you can then go to, but you've already got some of that strength there, so it's not gonna be too much to just start straight away on the floor. Okay, and then, um, Oh, quick question, any exercises for sore knees? Um, there are lots of different exercises, so squat exercises can be particularly helpful for the knees, but it depends on what's causing the knee pain. Um, I, Vanessa, if you get in contact with me at um, the email address in the video description, and I'll, put, I'll have a chat with you about um, if you have any knee issues and then go through some more specific exercises, because sometimes um, you want to have exercises that aren't putting any weight on the knees to, to help with the strengthening. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll put together some um, more specific ones for you. So the um, four point kneeling exercise that I mentioned, I'll show you that with the camera down here. So we, I've shown this before in the um, back exercise video. But what you want to do, so this is gonna help with the muscles all around your spine and also into your hips as well. So if you are comfortable to, come down onto the floor into this position. And if you, um, if you want to do it in bed, you're able to do that, obviously in the middle of the bed. But obviously don't do this if this is difficult, getting down onto the floor and back up again. If this is comfortable, you want to have your shoulders in line with your wrists here. Don't lock your elbows out, make sure it's comfortable. And you want to have your hips in line above your knees. Once you're in that position and you're comfortable, you can just gently lift one hand up 
and come back down while tensing your stomach muscles and do the same on the other side and come back down then we can do the same on the knee so you're shifting your balance away from the leg you're going to lift up and then you just gently lift up and come back down and then gently lift up on the other side and come back down so ideally you want to keep your balance as you do this as you lift you don't want to then drop on that side you're using the muscles around your spine to keep nice and stable so we'll do that once more so we'll start with one hand first of all keep nice and strong tense your stomach muscles in and just lift one hand up slightly and come back down nice and slow and controlled and same on the other side and back down nice and controlled and then we're going to go with one knee again keep the stomach muscles tensed and lift and come back down and same on the other side and come back down to make this more advanced you can lift the hand up and then you can straighten it out in front of you and come back down same on the other side so you just shift your weight over tense your stomach muscles arm all the way up so it's nice and straight come back down and I don't really have enough room in front in behind me but you can then lift the leg and bring it and straighten it all the way out and come back down and do the same on the other side. So bring this back up here. All right, I'll let everyone have a little breather in case you've been trying along with that one. I'll go through a few of the um, questions and comments as well. Uh, so Nikki is asking about exercises for hips said I'm trying online zoom classes doing body sculpt but when it comes to lower back hip joints knees and abdomen I literally have no muscle strength at all and when I try on all fours to kick my leg out to the side my hip joint seems to lock up what can I do um so I would if you get in touch with me Nikki and we can have a chat about that because it may be that you need some more targeted strengthening exercises to begin with um but also it's important just to check because sometimes you can get stiffness in the hip joints with AS, so it may be that you've got some general stiffness there that's actually affecting it. Um, we'll have a chat, and if I can't help, then I can always recommend seeing a physiotherapist to help with that. Um, right, so um, yes, and someone mentioned Pilates as well to help with knee pain. Pilates can be really helpful, particularly because you're doing a lot of that kind of bridging movement, and you're going to um, use more indirect exercises for the knees as well, so it should be nice and comfortable. So I'll just have a quick sip of drink. Yep, and Sally has explained that some of our branches are now running virtual sessions as well. So do get in touch with Sally. Um, she's sally at nas.co.uk. Um, and so she would be um, able to check where you live and see if there are any branches nearby who are doing the virtual sessions as well. So the next section, um, the next type of exercise, so we've gone through the aerobic, flexibility, strength, and now one of the most important things is balance as well. It's something that quite often I think is only addressed when someone starts having issues with their balance, or if you have a diagnosis of osteoporosis where you've got weakening of the bones, or if you get fusions in your back, because you, if, you're, um, if you have osteoporosis or fusions and you have a fall, you are at increased risk of fracture, so then people are reminded obviously to work on their balance to reduce the risk of falls. But really, the earlier that you can start working on this, the better. It's much better to prevent your balance getting worse and you know make sure that it stays uh, in a good condition rather than wait until you're having difficulties with that balance and then you are having to build up from there. So there are some really, really simple exercises you can do that's going to work on your balance and you can fit them in just randomly throughout the day. And so I'll go through a few of those now. They're all standing, so if you want to take part, then please do have a chair or a table um, handy that you can use for balance if you need to. Um, and if, you're, if your balance is really poor, then I'd recommend watching the, the exercises first and then trying them again later on. But have someone with you so that you can use something for support, but also have them there just in case, because you want to make sure you're safe when you do these. So I'll bring the laptop up again so you can see standing. So I'll bring it down so you can see my feet more, that would be easier. So the first one is a really, really simple one. It's just literally standing on one leg. 
So have, if you want to do this, you can be standing in front of a table and just using that. You can have your fingertips on there so that if you feel wobbly and you're like you're going to fall, you can hold on to something. If you have um, difficulty with balance already, you can use a lot of pressure on there. And then gradually over time, as you, this exercise get eas gets easier, you can then just gently lift up so you're not placing as much pressure on there. But essentially, all you're going to do is you're going to stand really focus on your feet and really feeling the, the ground and being aware of it. And then we're going to lift our right leg first. So to begin with, you want to shift your attention to the left leg and try and shift your centre of gravity and your balance into that left side. And then just gently bend that right knee so your, finger, your toes are still on the floor and just gradually bring the foot off the floor and just hold it for as long as it feels easy to. It's better to hold it for a short period of time and then have that slow, gradual place on the foot down rather than holding it for as long as you can and then when you get wobbly you have to just suddenly put the foot down. It's better to have that slow, controlled movement as you do it. So again, we'll do it on the left leg again. So we're lifting the right leg. So you're going to stand, use something for balance if you need to and then just slowly lift the foot all the way up and then come back down nice and slow. And we'll try on the other side. So again, you're going to shift your attention into that right leg this time. And then just gently bend that left knee and bring the left foot off the floor. And then come back down. So as you can see, my left leg is a lot better at balancing than my right. It's really common that it'll be different on different sides. Um, so don't feel worried about that. Uh, we'll do that one more time. So focusing on the right leg, gently bending that left knee, then lifting the left foot up, and then bringing it back down again. Great, so everyone let me know how you found that, and if you had a difficulty on one side more than the other, that would be interesting. Then the next exercise are toe taps. So with this, you're going to shift your weight onto one leg first of all. So I'm going to start by shifting the weight onto my left leg. Then you lift the leg and you just gently tap your toes in front of you. Toe across your body so you're on the left side, then out to the other side and bring the foot back down. So again, you just shift so you're standing on your left leg. Tap your toes in front of you, across your body on the left, then out to the right and bring back down. So because you've got that movement going there, you're really testing your balance. It's, it's much more advanced than the standing and lifting the leg up. We'll try on the right side. And this is definitely going to be my wobbly side. So again, you just shift the weight onto the right, lift the foot, tap in front of you. This time you go to the right first, cross your body, and then to the left, and then back down. So one more time, shifting so you lift the left leg, tap in front of you, across, and then to the left and back down. Again, do that nice and slowly so that you can really feel the muscles working. You've got that slow controlled movement. It's gonna be a lot more beneficial than doing it really quickly and wobbly. Then the final one is just gonna be going onto your tiptoes. So again, you can do this standing in front of a table or a chair and hold on to that for support. You're just gonna gently lift up onto your tiptoes as far as comfortable and then come back down. And again, like standing on one leg, just do it for as long as it feels comfortable. Don't feel like you have to do it for ages. It's better to do for a short period of time in a controlled way rather than a long period of time where you're very unbalanced. So how did everyone get on with the balance exercises there? It's something, as I said, I think is quite easily overlooked, but actually if you can do these earlier and keep your balance there, the better it's better really rather than waiting until your balance is starting to get worse and then it's harder to build up again. Uh, there are a lot of a lot of different exercises you can do for your balance and a lot more advanced as well. So I would recommend if those if you tried those and they felt really easy, get in touch with a physiotherapist and they'll be able to put together some more advanced exercises for you to do as well. So um, a lot of these exercises you'll find are a combination of the different types. So I did go through aerobic, strengthening, flexibility and balance, but actually naturally some of these exercises are going to be working on multiple things at once. So if you're short on time, if you have a lot of fatigue, it can be really helpful to find exercises that do work on a number of different things. 
So for example, that exercise where, where you're kneeling on all fours and lifting an arm or a leg, that's gonna be working on your strength, a little bit on flexibility, but also on your balance there as well. And then if you're looking at improving your flexibility in your hips in particular, walking is gonna be helpful both for flexibility, strengthening the muscles, but also the aerobic side of things as well. So that's gonna cover most areas there as well. In terms of how often you should do these exercises, in the write-up that we'll put on the website later on, um, I have got some suggested repetitions and frequency of how to do the exercises to begin with. As I said, just start nice and gently and build up over time depending on your own ability and your own fitness as well. And really, it's almost better to do these little and often than it is to do one exercise session per week and then nothing for the rest of the week. Because naturally with AS, especially when you're dealing with inflammation as well, you may well find that in the morning you've got that inflammation, that stiffness there, and as you get moving, it gets easier through the day. So it's much better to do a little bit of exercise each day to help with that, rather than just the one big session and then resting the rest of the time. Because then when you do then go and do more activity, it feels more of a shock really, if you've not kept that flexibility there every single day. And then if you experience a lot of fatigue or if you find that exercises are uncomfortable to do, then breaking them down into smaller amounts can be really helpful. So you can do an exercise just regularly throughout the day, having lots of breaks in between. This is particularly helpful with, with fatigue, just picking one specific exercise, doing that, and then an hour later doing a different particular exercise, and also making sure that you work on different parts of your body each time, so you're not just focusing on the same area every time, and then getting the muscle fatigue there as well. And then also for a reminder to do the exercises, it can be really helpful to use things like a timer on your phone to do the exercises. Or if you have a, have a friend who has AS um, or another condition where they need to do exercises, then as I mentioned earlier, buddying up with them and having that system where you remind each other and support each other can be really helpful as well. You can also put notes around the house as well, so places where you're going to see them when you've got a little bit of time. So perhaps on the bathroom mirror you can have a note just as a reminder to an exercise on a fridge. Um, a note beside the kettle can be helpful because then you can have particular exercises that you know take one or two minutes to do. So while the kettle's boiling you can get a couple of exercises in there um, and it's a way that if you drink as much coffee as I do you'll be doing quite a few exercises every day without actually having to set any time aside for it. So hopefully that has given you lots of ideas in terms of exercises you can do at home. Um, hopefully I've given lots of information so that you're able to adapt them depending on your, your own ability and your own fitness. Um, and as I said, definitely do speak to us if you needed more personalised advice or anything like that. And on the 22nd of June, um, we'll be having a session with a physio talking all about motivation for exercises as well. So anyone who's struggling at the moment, particularly if you've been at home for a long time on your own, um, then hopefully that session will be really helpful for you. So do let me know if you have any more questions. I'll just scroll back up and just see if there are any other questions that I've missed. Um, yeah, so James similarly is feeling the difficulty with the motivation as well. Um, so definitely I think the live um, on the 22nd will be really helpful for that. Um, so yeah, a few people who do Pilates, that's really good. Um, and Anne's been finding her local NAS branch there, able to do the weekly sessions online, which has been fantastic. So um, yeah, hopefully lots of people will be joining in with those online. So if there are no more questions, then I'll, I'll sort of finish up there for today. But so thank you for joining everyone and thank you for getting involved and chatting with each other. That's always a really nice aspect of these live videos. Um, next week I will be talking hopefully all about appointments and how to make the most of appointments, particularly with virtual appointments as well. So um, do let me know if you have any questions in advance for those. Drop me an email zoe at nas.co.uk. As I said at the beginning, this video will remain on the page afterwards and we'll also upload it onto the website too. So do um, check that out later on along with the write-up of the exercises and let us know if we can help. But I hope you're all keeping well and I hope that gives you a few ideas on getting more active if you're at home more often still. Um, and hopefully see you next week. Thanks everyone.